Welcome everybody to Amp Books number three. And today's reading is going to be from one of my good friends, Daniele Bellelli. And he wrote a book called Not Afraid. And this book might have gone under the radar for some of y'all. And some of you guys might know Daniele from my podcast, from me being on his podcast, from him being on the Joe Rogan Experience. But he has some amazing stories, some personal stories he tells in this book. And also closes with an amazing passage on the nature of fear and how we can wrangle it. But before we get into the reading of Not Afraid, the way that we make this podcast possible is through the support of our sponsors. And of course, on it is our day one sponsor. And the product Alpha Brain is our day one product. So if you're not familiar with it yet, I encourage you guys to check it out. All natural cognitive enhancer, studied in clinical research. It's the reason I'm able to help bring my own cognitive ability to its highest potential to retain the knowledge from books like the book I'm about to read and any of these other books or anything that I'm doing that requires me to be at my absolute best. Alpha Brain is just that tool that I have in my tool belt always. So go to onit.com slash Aubrey, save 10% on Alpha Brain, and let me know what you think. I think you guys are going to dig it if you haven't tried it yet. So without further ado, into the reading of Daniele Bellelli's Not Afraid. <clears throat> From chapter 54, in the beginning was fear. In the beginning was fear. The fear that everything that has a body experiences once it realizes we live in a predatory universe. A universe in which absolutely everything gets to be eaten. If not by the sharp fangs of a predator, then by time itself. And fear became our god and it began to rule over our lives, shrink our willingness to dare, and rob us of the beauty of it all. Fear is written in the deepest layer of our DNA. You can't run away from it. You can't escape it. It's so pervasive that plenty of people try to exorcise the demon. Religions, philosophies, advertisements, motivational speakers, they all tell you that if you make the jump and follow their cure, you'll no longer have anything to fear. They tell you that there are no monsters hiding under your bed. They promise you safety from everything you fear. They promise you a sense of empowerment. They promise you victory against all odds. The reality is they are trying to sell you something. The monster is indeed under your bed after all. The reality is that you have every good reason to be afraid because everything you fear is on your tracks right now and will eventually catch up to you and destroy everything you loved and everything you are. Welcome to the world, motherfuckers. So why not afraid? Wouldn't it be more appropriate to call this book scared shitless and rightfully so? Because being scared doesn't help you. Reality is uglier and harsher than anything we like to admit to ourselves. And yet it's pointless to be scared since your fear will not protect you. Fear is only useful if it alerts you of a danger you can avoid. But if there's no possible way to avoid it, if it's inevitable that it'll crush you no matter how hard you fight, then what's the point of being afraid? If you have no hope of survival, what's left to be afraid of? The only thing you'll succeed in doing is spoiling this very second when the forces that will destroy you haven't stepped onto the stage yet. Yes, you will not get out of here alive. But so what? All the more reason to celebrate right here and right now. Let's pop the champagne before all hell breaks loose. Squeeze every last ounce of orgasmic ecstasy from the present moment. And when the monster finally climbs out from under your bed, at least you'll have a good reason to smile before he devours you. You are already dead. Let's have a party in the meantime. Powerful words there from my brother, Daniele Bellelli. And when he's talking about fear, obviously he's talking about fear at the realm of our normal existence. He's talking about the fear of time devouring our body of things that can happen he tells the story of someone he loved deeply 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 who got cancer and he was there as she died of this disease and that is something when any of us experience trauma 
fear rides along with that trauma. We're afraid of experiencing these traumatic experiences once again. So Daniele has the choice then, will I love somebody else when I know that they could get cancer and I could watch them die? Well, if he doesn't love anybody else, then he's robbing himself of that, in his words, orgasmic ecstasy of the present moment. He's robbing himself of the ability to enjoy life at all. So the point of this is, is that all of these things that we're attached to in the material sense, they're all going to be taken away. Every single thing. There's nothing about this life in this material world that we get to keep. None of it. I mean, I think in antiquity, people would like, well, you'll keep the legacy of your name. Fucking who cares? You're dead. Like, it doesn't matter. You have transitioned, in my belief system at least, to the unborn and the undying who has just cared about your learning, not cared about your legacy. Like, that doesn't matter to the unborn and the undying consciousness and awareness, which is a part of you that doesn't need to be afraid because it doesn't need to be attached to this life. But that's not what Daniele's talking about. Daniele's talking about the animal, the mind, the ego, the part of us where we're normally operating. And that part gets to cling to nothing. It's like we're grappling against a jujitsu black belt with an undefeatable record. Time is going to strangle you. Like it will, no matter what. And there's tons of people who are trying to like find the way out and wiggle and squirm and get out and retain this identity. Like, why would you want to retain this identity forever? Why not engage in a new one? It, I think it comes from the denial of who we really are, which is that eternal form of consciousness that gets to have many, many adventures. And that's another way to actually release fear. And some people might say that may be part of what Daniele was saying, oh, people are gonna sell you this. I'm not trying to sell you this. This is what I've experienced. This is what I've felt. This is what, in my own heart, I know to be true. Now, does that mean that I don't get scared? Of course I get fucking scared because I get attached to stuff all the time. Like I still care deeply about this body. I still feel pain when anything hits me. It still hurts when something goes the way I didn't want it to go with a lover or with a friend or with a business. All of those pains are still very real to me now, but they're not real to me later. Like, think about that. Think about all of these things and all of these heartbreaks and all of these issues that we've had. Like, so many things that stressed us out and caused us so much pain. And, and we, like, look back at them, like, from five days ago, five months ago, five years ago. We're like, oh, yeah, that was hard then, but now it doesn't fucking matter. So, like, all of this stuff that we accumulate all this fear for, it just robs us of the ability to live freely and in the moment and enjoy life now. So that's the point that he's making. Like whether it's the champagne bottle, literally, or whether it's just the champagne bottle of our own joyous expression of not being afraid because we're not attached to anything that we have right now that we need to be afraid of. And it's tricky though, because like attachment is one of those things that creeps in as soon as you have preference. Like as soon as one thing is better than another thing, as soon as you feel like it's better to have your husband or your wife stay with you than leave you, well, then you're attached to that, you know, and that's just coming from preference. So I'm not saying that it's even quite possible to shed all attachment. I mean, I think the great spiritual masters have achieved a sense of that. You know, when I listen to someone like Ramdas who suffered a stroke and is now in a wheelchair, when I listen to him say, I love my pain, I love my wheelchair, like I believe him. I believe that he's created a parody of preference in which he's not attached to any particular outcome. He's just in rapture with what actually is. That's a type of enlightenment. That's the absolute liberation from fear. That's the farthest end of the spectrum. But for most of us, we can just take any step along that way and we're just more free and more happy. And so the more we can remove attachment, the more that we can remove these expectations, the more that we accept what is while still striving for what we want but doing it with that kind of carefree laughter that it's just a game man it's just a game like play it like it's a game play business like it's a game play your love life like it's a game plays your sex life like it's a game play all these things like it's a game and if it doesn't go your way like it's okay it's all okay like take the importance and the life or death feeling out of all these things that aren't actually life or death. 
you know, because that's what fear was designed for. Fear was designed for actual life or death. Like a fucking tiger is chasing you. That's what fear is for. That's the alert that comes from danger. But that's not what we're really afraid of. We're afraid of all of these emotional turmoils and traumas and challenges. But there's really no reason for that. I mean, it's actually that famous line, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Like fear is fear is the greatest enemy. Fear is the thing that we need to be the most afraid of which means we shouldn't be afraid of anything at all. It just accepting what is. Yeah, pain sucks, pleasure's better. I get it. It's gonna be a natural inherent organism preference. But nonetheless, the fear doesn't help that. And the chronic fear just becomes chronic anxiety the f- and other different forms that fear manifests. Like you can track most of the conditions that we find ourselves in suffering with all the way back to fear. That's like that's like the central hub of where all this shit comes from. So the most we can divorce ourselves from that aspect of fear, just the happier person we're going to be and the freer person we're going to be. And freedom really to me is the ultimate goal and fear is the limiting factor on that freedom. You know, fear is the thing that robs us of our free will. I remember one time and I'll close with this. I remember one time probably only one time I actually experienced true fearlessness. And uh, I had some psychedelic assistance for this moment. And it was on a Wachuma journey. And I was there at Spirit Quest Sanctuary, Sanctuary and I was up on the sun deck. And I felt myself transform into a jaguar. And at that moment, I could feel my claws like digging into the clay of the sun deck and i could feel like my muscles bristle and i could hear like a little low growl emerge and it was just this moment of genuine fearlessness that i could feel from every like cellular level the feeling that a predator that has no idea that time is stalking them and knows that they are the king and apex predator in the entire jungle like the jaguar would that feeling of fearlessness where there's literally nothing they're afraid of at that moment it's radical presence but also radical free will the ability to choose any path you want you know because and that could be anything that's being a poet being a singer being a entrepreneur launching whatever being a public speaker launching a podcast whatever the fuck you want to do it's fear that's limiting you from doing that. And that's what freedom really is. Freedom is the ability to choose what you want and not have that force of resistance acting against you, preventing you from doing it. And as I said, look, I'm not saying this to someone like, yeah, I beat fear, yeah, hooray. Like I literally experienced it for like three minutes on Wachuma, which is a powerful psychedelic, but I'm working every day towards limiting the effects that fear have on my life and i think that's the best that we can all do is just to become aware of it you know to love it and to recognize like oh i see you fear i love you you know but i don't need you and that's always the way that it's easiest to move through it rather than fighting against it and being afraid of it just witness it love it allow it to move through you go beyond it and be a little bit more free thank you so much everybody for tuning in to ant books number three once again the book is not afraid by my man, Daniele Bellelli.